We're heading to Murray Speyside for a three-day wheelchair accessible adventure with the help of Visit Murray Speyside. Come with us. We've arrived! We are here in Murray Speyside and this week we've got a fantastic itinerary of wheelchair accessible things to do all planned for us by the lovely folks at Visit Murray Speyside. Tonight we are staying here at the loft camping and glamping. Come and take a look inside with us it's an accessible cabin so fingers crossed it's gonna be pretty cool. Look at this! Oh this is fantastic! This accessible pod at the loft glamping and camping sleeps up to five with a double bed, single bed and double sofa bed. There's a small pull-out dining table and a fab wee kitchen too. I really like the way these cupboards work. So they're all individual on wheels and they can be pulled out and arranged however you want to allow access under the work surfaces. It's pretty cool. There's also a wet room bathroom with a shower chair provided and plenty of grab rails around the toilet and sink. You can check out Wigwam Holidays too for more accessible cabins throughout the UK. When we arrived at our accommodation, we found that Brody Country Pair had dropped off these amazing hampers. Come we're, on. <laughs> we're just going to have a look inside. Wow. Oh my God, there's wow. everything. There's snacks. They are getting devoured tonight. Some fizz, can't go wrong with some fizz. Ooh, chocolate spoons. Do you know what's great as well is that all of this is suitable for vegans. So I, like, I think Brody's just kits for everyone. A big thank you to Brody Country Fair for our hampers. I highly recommend popping in on your way to the loft to pick up a hamper of goodies to enjoy during your stay. Right, it's time to head out on our first adventure. We're here at Murray Community Woodlands. We're here with wild things. So Jamie is going to take us around the forest for an explore. We're going to see what we can find, listen out for some birds. He has a flask of hot water. We're going to make some tea out of something. There's an all abilities path through the woodland with some short, steep sections. We wandered along while Jamie told us all about conservation, the trees we encountered, and even included some folklore. Because of that sort of shaking and sort of it makes a rustling noise in the forest, that was thought to be um, sort of then sort of Scottish folklore that they were associated with the, the other world, the spirit world. And it was the trees whispering, telling the spirit world what was going on. We were encouraged to get hands on and we had a go at bug catching. Look away now if you don't like spiders. Did you see this on it? Okay, it's safe to look again. Here, Jamie is preparing us a cup of birch tea made with the leaves of the silver birch tree. That's quite nice. I like that. It's subtle, isn't it? I don't think it tastes like anything. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> After that, we headed to Fintorn for a relaxing stroll along this coastal path. While you're in the area, you really must pop into the Park Eco Village where the Phoenix Shop and Fintorn Foundation are based. There's an amazing community there and heaps of workshops to get involved in. On the way back to the loft, we stopped in at Kinloss Abbey. It was founded in 1150 and it's still used as a burial ground today. Visitors are welcome all year round. Well, after our exciting first day, it was time for bed back at the loft. Day two kicked off with an archery adventure at House of Morven. A quick note, there's a short, bumpy, grassy path into the shed that I needed assistance with, but once inside, everything's fairly smooth. And with a little bit of instruction, before long, we were feeling like Robin Hood. We definitely earned our lunch after that. We're at the Abelawa Hotel waiting for our lunch. We're just gonna chill out for a bit and then we're off to the card do distillery where I'm gonna be made to drink alcohol. I can't. She keeps having them. Yeah. Don't drink. Keep making her drink whiskey. Well, it was gin last time, wasn't it? I don't like gin, but whiskey, I, yeah. I don't like whiskey either, but I'll, I'll have a go at it. Yeah. <laughs> Could Cardew change Kirsty's mind? We joined a guided tour of the distillery. 
It was informative, hands-on and a total sensory experience. There were some parts of the tour that weren't wheelchair accessible, but another guide took me through a video tour, so I didn't miss out on too much. <laughs> and was Kirsty converted? Well, let's put it this way, she was eager to get a bottle from the shop before we left. Time to soak up some of that whiskey with a lovely evening meal at the Mosset Tavern. I highly recommend the churros. There's a lovely path by the river for an after-dinner stroll too. So what did day three have in store for us? Today we're going to go and spot dolphins. Hopefully, fingers crossed. We are wish manifesting. Us, wish manifesting. Us a dolphin. No, wish us 10 dolphins, 100 dolphins. Yeah. Maybe that's a bit much. Yeah, so we're going to go um, dolphins, we're going to go to a walled, walled garden. garden. Um, we're going to have beer. I always have, I'm the one that always has to drink the alcohol and just a wee heads up, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we've got a ghost tour tonight. Ghost tour, yeah. And then we need to come home and pack, which is really sad. I don't want to go. I'm I definitely, I don't know about you, but I really need to be looking at a, a bit back. longer up here. We're definitely coming back. We I, are coming back. Marie I think we, we've been. been over quite a lot of Scotland and I, I've got to say this is up there. So, wish us dolphins. Wish us dolphins. What noise does a dolphin make? <laughs> That's... It was such a misty morning that sadly we didn't see any dolphins, but we still had a great time learning a lot about the amazing work done by the Scottish Dolphin Centre. And we got to try out their interactive cameras. Plus, I expanded my repertoire of animal impressions. During the summer, there are also tours of the Ice House, the building in the background here, which is wheelchair accessible. After that, we headed to the beautiful Gordon Castle walled garden. It's a kitchen garden, so there's something to see year round. They also have a brilliant cafe, the perfect lunch stop for us, before we headed to Windswept Brewing. What was they made in there and the and then it's transferred up into the kettle. We had a brilliant tour of the brewery and learned all about the brewing process. I love what they do here. It's a small business with a focus on the environment and they really encourage their team to be creative. Throughout the summer, they hold events with great local food and live music. And of course, their award-winning beers. So Kirsty, what's your verdict? It's so delicious. Do like it? <laughs> I like it. I think Kirsty would have gladly spent the night in the tap room, but the White Witch was waiting for us in Elgin for a very spooky tour. <coughs> this tour was great. Our guide told us heaps of local stories and pointed out details in the buildings around us that you'd just otherwise miss. Most of us have been going since the 60s. I thought they couldn't make it work out. Wow. Yeah. But if you rewind 400 years, it's actually part of the convent's life. Having had personal experience of using a wheelchair, she was mindful of dropped curbs and tried to avoid cobbles. We could have chatted away for hours, but sadly we had to get home to pack. We still had one treat waiting for us back at the loft though. We got to feed the resident pet goats. It was the perfect way to end an amazing week in Murray Speyside. I've listed all the places we stayed and visited in the description box below. We'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone involved, especially Visit Murray Speyside. Don't forget to follow them on socials at Murray Speyside. And if you don't already, give me a wee follow too at Wheelie Braw for more wheelchair accessible adventures in Scotland.